are at Universal Audio's headquarters here in Scotts Valley, California, because they just bought something pretty special, something I've actually never had the opportunity to play through before, and that is a real plate reverb. Now, if you don't know what a plate reverb is, we're going to show you everything about it in this video. In fact, we're going to talk about sort of the history of reverb, how it started back in the 50s with Capitol Records and Hitsville and uh, all these amazing studios that built chambers, and then from there moved to the plate reverb, the EMT-140, which is what we have set up right back there. So we're actually going to play through the plate today and hear how it compares to the modern day equivalents, which are plugins and pedals. And then on top of that, we have the first sort of major digital reverb that took over from the EMT-140, which was the Lexicon 224. So if you're into reverb, we're going to cover basically all the bases today and uh, learn about how this amazing old machine does what it does. Okay, so this is a plate. This is a giant tomb, basically coffin of a plate reverb. And, and we've got the guy who deals with these a lot, Mr. Will Shanks here. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah. Is, this is the star of the thing. This is an EMT-140 stereo plate. Basically takes mono signal in, sends back stereo signal. It's all mechanical, um, so the concept behind it is you take a tension piece of steel, so really it's a sheet, it's not technically a plate, and with that tensioning, it becomes almost like a drum head, and you can even, later we'll flick it, and you can hear how the tension gives it a resonance. So how would you have gotten reverb in a studio setting before the plate? Right, you would have had to build a room, a purpose-built room, that would create ambience. And all, you know, we're gonna talk more about that, but you just put microphones and speakers in it, you blast the room with sound, pick it up with microphones, and mix that in with your dry signal. Bill Putnam, the founder of Universal Audio, was the first person to use artificial reverb on a successful record. So he used the men's room at the Chicago Opera House to apply artificial reverb after the recording was done. The, the construction of a chamber could be as uh, sophisticated as what Les Paul did. He basically came up with that design. I think it kind of started at uh, Gold Star and Capital saw this particular trapezoidal design as something that worked well. It basically replicated that yeah. and made it patchable to uh, eight different chambers. So this is an EMT-140. So when would this have come out and, and studios started to shift from building chambers to putting plates? Well, I think it first came out in the mid-50s, late 50s. 1957, I looked it up. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, it was really desirable for recording because it didn't take up too much space, right? And because it's brighter than a chamber. So anything you use, you can use a dark sounding instrument and this will make it sound brighter. And it'll stay out of the way of everything else. And I remember using these, it was like sonic caulk or sonic glue because everybody had the, a little bit of the plate. The singer, the maybe not the bass player, but everybody but the bass player yeah. would have a little of the plate on it. And so everybody got this coherent kind of shadow or cloud that was really desirable and didn't take up too much space. Exactly. We grew up listening to this yeah. on every record. And the fact that you can actually change the decay time, you can creatively tune it. Yeah, to do that with a chamber, you'd have to physically change the size of the space. So I was at Capitol and I, we opened up the trap door to, to look at the rooms. And I could have gone down the ladder, but the air is not necessarily breathable. It's like, that's not healthy to go down in there. But they, they're, you know, subterranean. And I know that before you guys came up with plugins that transcended all this stuff, before you did that, those rooms were actually used via ISDN by people in other studios. They would tap into the Capitol uh, chambers and all use them at, all around town. Yeah, what? Yes, yes. Yeah, you could use phone lines. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? So you yeah. would like, basically call in to the, the yes. Capitol chambers. <laughs> what? Do that. Actually, Bill Putnam did that too in Chicago. Really? Yeah. <sighs> You went down there. You spent yeah, I spent a couple days yeah. down there. You know, I had to sign a waiver for asbestos, exactly. and yeah. Oh, so you went into the Capitol went, ones? Uh, or? It, it yeah, took two yeah. days to capture all the chambers when we were down there, and it was a dusty, nasty place. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to go down there. Yeah. No, there was a ladder, right? Is There's that a ladder? Yeah, so you got right? you got to yeah. scale the ladder twenty yeah. feet down, and you know you got to take this long hallway till you finally get to the vestibule, as they call it, like a half honeycomb, you know, series of trapezoidal chambers. And if you want to go deeper, there's another four that they added later. Oh, we'll just go out this way. Wow. Moving. 
Let me put it out in the hallway. Yeah. Oh, cool. Check this out. Wow. So this is just like a like a fiberboard. Yeah, it's basically ceiling tile in an office. A little bit more dense than that. But as you can see, it's the exact same dimensions as the plate itself. And if you look closely here, here's how it's tensioned. Just these nuts and the holes, reinforced holes, pull the tension two directions on each corner. Transducer is right here. This is what sends signal into the plate. And then the pickups are on either side. But the original uh, pickups are right here. Kind of the same concept as the driver. So it's essentially the same thing, but kind of wired in reverse. It's like the difference between a speaker and a microphone. Very similar concept, but yeah, two different applications. Now one thing I didn't realize that I learned is there is flutter and modulation on this plate, and I think that's one of the reasons we love it so much. As the waves go across it, there's a little bit of modulation and flutter really? that are actually part of the reverb. It's the same with springs. If you send signal down a spring, it's going back and forth, and there's torsion that occurs on the spring. So it's another form of mechanical reverb that has some of the same attributes. This is way more pure, and you can put a snare through it, and it, the, the, the attack is beautiful. It's just crisp, and tsh, you heard it just on the mechanical plate. A spring would rattle and boing, and it, it's not going to have that perfectly great immediate response that a plate would. There's that modulation. A little quiver or and it's still flutter. Going. It's going to go out there for a long time. Yeah. It's so dark too. It's like really like heavy. There's a lot of low end yeah. information there. For a second it sounded like an oil can reverb too. All the way up. We're fully maxed. Yeah, it's all the way up. That damper's as as far off away as from. Me. So what if we tightened it up a little bit and got it like uh, maybe halfway? That's the sound I've heard my whole life, basically. <laughs> and I don't have to be as shy as a guitar player. I can just start hitting now. Right. Low end tightened way up too. Yeah, you could do a whole mix with really that one reverb, yeah. maybe a couple of compressors here and there, and that would be all the upper gear you'd probably need to get a classic rock Tom Petty ish, yeah. like trio, you know, kind of sound. Yeah, it does have like the. Every engineer I would ever work with that would use one of these things, at a certain point they would get your sound and they would just go, boop. Yeah. and turn it on and so everybody go ah so you basically took that big brown box out there and put it in that little brown box in top. there yeah and and that one has three different plates in it as you can see that's that's one big plate you that is what it is but what we were able to do is shoot three different plates in that yeah it's got that So we started with the rooms, with chambers, and then in 57, we go to the plate, which is revolutionary because you didn't need the chamber anymore. And then what, 25, 30 years later, the next major sort of step forward was this. So yeah, it's the first algorithmic reverb, so it's digital. There's a bunch of processors in there. And yeah, it was the next step beyond these huge mechanical plates and these big concrete rooms. Hey, let's shrink it down into a box. And not only is it an algorithmic reverb that has all these delay lines, there's actually chorus modes in it, it has modulation. Right. So you basically, you no longer needed the, the plate, you just put this computer in your machine room and then you had the remote that would live on the console. And like, this looks really familiar to me. I mean, if you've ever used like the plug-in or whatever, this is what you're, yeah, you're I, seeing. I spent decades in front of that. But I found out that this was $7,500 in 1978 with two programs. $7,900 with four programs. 
Yep. What for programs mean? Yeah, I don't like, know what that means. A program means it's the algorithm that can be manipulated. So, you know, Lexicon furthered their designs. They started with a particular sound and then took it further. By the end, there was a software Rev 4.4, which is what the plugin is based on, and that's the same thing that's in the pedal. But that was its own kind of bling. You know, if you walked into a studio and that was on the console, it was like, oh yeah. Oh, they got a lexicon. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's still kind of like that. Yeah. If you see yeah. this sitting on the console, it's like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Can we hear it? Wow. I can hear a shadow of the phrase I just played. It's awesome. Oh, yes. Yeah, right? Kind of. Wow. Wow. <laughs> You're right. You can hear, like, the little oh, yeah. delay lines coming through. Wow. That's I never so knew that. cool. So if I go to program five. because it's not transparent or clean or high fidelity at all. There's a or lot natural. of or natural. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of artifacts. It's, it's oscillating. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really noisy, but it's that's kind of where it's like the plate is, that's kind of where the the charm comes from. The thing that's unique about the 224, it actually has a split decay. So between a bass fader and a top end fader, they call it mid, but there's a crossover between the two sides of the decay. Oh, got it. So, so you can make the high end decay longer than the low end exactly. or vice versa. Yep. And then there's the treble decay, which just kind of rolls off the top end. So if you hit it. Now you got the low frequency decaying much right. farther. That's super cool. was like the eventide space and then moving into you know the shrine and stuff and now what you guys are making like this stuff it's been always easy for me to get these like huge washy ambient reverbs but in 78 79 this was groundbreaking brand new. Oh, yeah. yeah brand new you couldn't make these sounds before the sound the name of the sounds in here are hall yeah. and room and plate, plate and even chamber yeah so it's a digital interpretation of what those familiar sounds were but really, they sounded quite different. Weird to see the inspiration, and they go, you're like, well, that didn't sound anything like that. But, but it's the, its own thing. It's its own thing. We live in a time where a pedal board has the power of this entire control room now, yeah. which is crazy to say. Yeah. It's pretty insane when you think about where we've gone. Well, that's the whole idea, like, why I wanted to come here and see this stuff is because for years, for me, you know, I, I got a reverb pedal, and I saw a plate and hall or chamber or spring and I knew what some of those things were but I didn't know what a plate was or what it meant and seeing that thing now and then hearing what it does in context is everything. One of them is the real plate and one of them is that pedal and you've never played through a real plate. No. Before, right? So I'm First like, time? Yeah. Right. So why don't we start with the plate? There you go. And then and then you can like like bounce it back and forth a bunch of times and it'll be like a uh, shell game. Play. Yeah, whatever <laughs> okay. you want. Yeah. Were you switching? Well, I switching the whole time. What? You were? Well, yeah. see, okay, there you go. Okay, yeah. I didn't hear any difference. I couldn't hear you switching either. Sorry. The only way you'd know is if you were watching the screen. Okay, what are we on? Uh, well, right now we're on uh, the hardware what? plate. So we're on the hardware plate. Yeah. I don't know if this is like placebo, but I did feel like like a touch difference, but like it just sounded the same. But it was just like 
I just adjusted when I was. That's weird. I didn't even hear him switch uh, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounded the same. So we're on the hardware right. plate. Right now we're on the hardware plate. Right? Okay, let's hear the plate. <laughs> It's like a decay thing. Is that the natural plate now? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, right. it's like a decay thing. Yeah. Now we eared this. We didn't actually take any measurements and try to match the decay. It sort of eared it out. Okay. So we gotcha. could move this around a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it really fool me. I didn't. I couldn't. I tell. couldn't tell either. Okay, so now I'm gonna run out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna open the dampener like all the way up, and let's get some like spacey, washy vibes going on. Right tell. at the end. Yeah. And I just eyeballed it out there. I just like yeah. twisted the thing oh, on top see. until it. But I could hear your guitar coming through it out there, which is pretty w wild. It's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. One thing about that plate, it's going to wobble the way it wobbles because there's a physical plate moving around in there where we can add that here. So we could go a little more ambient, even more, put more decay, put a little pre delay and some modulation on it. It's into like chorus territory. Oh, yeah, I was like, like, it does sound like a chorus. <laughs> 